G'day YouTube, welcome to my channel. It is March 23rd, 2023, and this video I'm recording today will be a quick showcase of a recent acquisition of mine. But first, let's go through a little bit of history of software-defined radio. In the year of 2001, the GNU radio project was started. In its infancy, it was an open source software development kit for implementing a RF signals processing framework for software programmable radios. The breakthroughs in cheap DVB-T dongle SDRs, such as the RTL SDR, were eventually spawned from the GNU radio project. However, before the cheap SDR dongle revolution of the early 2010s came this massive black box thing, the USRP-1. USRP stands for Universal Software Radio Peripheral, or USERP, as some people refer to them as. Uh, it was designed by Matt Edis in 2003-2004, roughly, after he joined the GNU Radio Project. Released in 2005 for 700 US dollars to buy new. Quite expensive. I was graduating high school when this thing was released, so yeah, I feel rather old, actually. Adjusted for inflation, that's about a thousand forty nine US dollars. So yeah, this thing was not cheap when it was released. In Australia it was probably worth about thirteen hundred and eighty five dollars, I predict. Uh, excluding postage, but postage was probably only gonna be fifteen or twenty dollars back then, US to Australia, I imagine. I actually got it used on eBay, posted within Australia for four hundred and thirty Australian dollars. So at the time that would have equated about 300 US dollars. So, yeah, 300 US dollars for something that potentially cost four figures in America. Not a bad deal, I think. Uh, I was buying an 18 year old software defined radio for 300 dollars a good idea. You decide. My wife certainly wasn't happy about it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, aesthetically, it is a rather large rectangular black box. Um, here's a beer can for size. So yeah, this thing is quite large. Takes up a fair bit of desk space, as you can imagine. Um, the top cover can be removed via three screws at the rear. Um, and you can access the interior of the enclosure via this method. Uh, the previous only, only had one screw out of three in place at the rear. Um, so probably he was opening the enclosure quite often instead of undoing three screws just undo one um, according to one of the stickers on the PCB inside uh, it was manufactured in the year of 2006 so it's quite old now but still works perfectly um, it's powered by 6 volts DC uh, mine didn't come with the power supply so I just bought a generic one which I sourced from the Radio Shack equivalent in Australia called JCAR. Um, you have to make sure the polarity is correct too when you're buying one of these cables because they the inner uh, the, the inner connector and the outer shield can be switched for polarity so yeah make sure you get the polarity correct when you're doing this because you don't want to fry your SDR. Um, it requires a USB type B to USB type A cable um, for the, and that is for the connection to the computer, obviously. Uh, it's got two SMA female RF connector ports at the front, labelled RF1 and RF2. I actually printed these labels out um, because that's what the PCB says and I kept forgetting which port was which. So RF1 uh, can transmit and receive and RF2 is receive only. Uh, internally, it has a cooling fan on the inside left of the enclosure, which is very nice because I live in a very hot tropical climate, and the two sides are grated to allow for airflow, so that's a very nice feature. Uh, USRP1s have two expansion ports internally, which can be populated with secondary PCB boards called daughter boards. I assume the purchaser optioned these uh, on their USRP1 depending on what frequency their projects required. At the time of me purchasing this second hand it had an RFX 1800 daughter board 
and a TV tuner card inside, as you can see here. I pulled the TV tuner card out because when trying to use software on Linux for this SDR, it always defaulted to receiving with the TV card. I couldn't figure out how to force it to use the RFX18 card. I tried with the command line features and all that and I could never I could never get it to not receive with the TV and actually start receiving with the RFX1800. Couldn't figure that out so I just pulled the card because I'm not interested in uh, receiving television with it because I've got RTO SDRs. So. Um, so the RFX1800 card has a frequency range of 1.5 gigahertz up to 2.1 gigahertz in the L band of the radio spectrum. It's full duplex, which means it can transmit and receive simultaneously. Uh, out of the out of the box, it can't be used for running cellular base stations because the internal 64 megahertz clock reference and oscillator are too unstable to cope with the very specific timings that cellular networks require. It can be modified to accept a more modern and stable 10 megahertz external clock reference but this is beyond my technical ability if anyone knows someone who could perform this modification for me please email me uh, in the future i would like to populate the unused expansion slot and add an rfx 900 daughter board for dual band 900 megahertz and 1800 megahertz gsm receiving if anybody knows of one of these rfx 900 boards for sale please contact me so now, hopefully, if everything works, I will attempt a live demonstration of this USRP decoding a rogue 2G base station running at my premises, powered by my Blade RF and Yate BTS. So here we go. I'll just uh, open a command line to my second PC terminal, SSH. We run Yate BTS like so. And then once that starts running, I will switch over to another terminal and we'll open Wireshark and then we will run this command here with GRGSM LiveMon and hopefully we should get some packets flowing as we receive the Rogue 2G base station. So here we go. And there we have it. That is a Nearly 18 year old SDR decoding a Yate BTS rogue base station. So yeah, that's very cool. I don't really know what other purposes I'm going to use for this USRP. I, I basically bought it as an impulse buy because they're very hard to come by on the second hand market and the later USRPs range from several thousand dollars to five digit figures and beyond with some of the USRP. So when I saw this for sale in Australia and for quite a reasonable price, I sort of jumped on the opportunity to purchase it. So yeah, anyway, I thought I would just showcase my new purchase for everybody there. It's a very nice piece of gear. Um, it's got a lot of history behind it with GNU radio and SDRs in general. We can basically thank all the RTL SDR advancements of the early 2010s on this thing so yeah it's a nice little piece of history i've acquired for myself so yeah thanks very much for watching everybody and i'll catch you all later bye